Surya Foundation for Performing Arts proudly presents Samvada with Sushma Mola. Candid conversations featuring the trailblazer artists of Bangalore. An exclusive insight into the lives and experiences of internationally renowned artists. Surya Foundation, the creators of Utsa, the Los Angeles Indian Dance Festival, and the North Georgia Indian Dance Festival. Proudly presents Samba. Deepa Narayanan Sashindran is a Kuchupri performer, teacher, choreographer, and curator from Bangalore. She is the founder and the artistic director of Kuchupudi Parampara Foundation. Trained under renowned gurus Manju Bhargavi and Guru Vempati Ravi Shankar, she is the first Kuchupudi artist from Bangalore carrying the legacy of late Guru Vempati Chinnasatyam all over Karnataka. She has performed in North America, Doha, Dubai, Abu Dhabi and at Bahrain at various prestigious events. She is empaneled with the Central Ministry of Culture for Festivals of India Abroad and Spikmaki. Please welcome Deepa Narayanan Sashindran. Namaste. This is Sushma Mohan from Surya Foundation for Performing Arts, Los Angeles and Atlanta. Welcome to Samvada. In this series, I speak to the trailblazers of Bangalore who have made a mark in the field of performing arts in Bangalore, in India, and the entire world of dancing. Today we meet the renowned Kuchpati exponent Guru Deepa Narayanan Sashindran. She is the founder, artistic director, and lifetime trustee of Kuchpati Parampara Foundation. Deepa, welcome. Namaste. Thank you, Sushma. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. Deepa has an extremely busy schedule and I'm really glad I could uh, uh, meet Deepa after many, many years. And uh, I have known her since my childhood and I have always been inspired and fascinated by the work Deepa has been doing in the world of performing arts. She's a guru, a performer and a curator. So she has... Uh, many uh, curatorial projects to her credit and I'm very happy that uh, Deepa is with us in Samvada series. So thank you Deepa. Thank you Sushma, I'm glad <laughs> that we could meet up and yes. have a talk this week. So how are you Deepa? How have you been? Life has been good post COVID now that uh, you know performing arts has opened up and we are uh, quite happy and excited to you know, you know showcase our production on the 29th and uh, it's a two hour uh, dance drama, Kushpi dance drama, Nandana Chalapar. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Wonderful. So in the middle of her rehearsals and uh, production work, uh, Deepa is uh, uh, here with us. So uh, we all know that Deepa is a very popular uh, dance guru and a busy, very busy person. So um, what are your hobbies, Deepa? So today we are going to talk about your non-dance uh, interests. <laughs> What are your hobbies, Deepa? Firstly, uh, I think the word guru would sound too odisan. I would prefer being an Acharya or a teacher. <laughs> okay, uh, more than hobbies, I would say I would, uh, I'm part of many other activities. For example, I'm a Rotarian, mm. so I'm part of Rotary Club. So uh, I am out of this art world, you know. They're a totally different uh, group altogether. Mm -hmm. So I engage uh, a lot of activities in the uh, most probably in the services and you know community service and uh, vocational services. So mm -hmm. I go around. Uh, uh, we had a lot, quite a lot of events that happened as part of uh, COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know um, to help with all the PHCs. That is the primary health centers. So mm -hmm. we had uh, we had to coordinate to help with the. Uh, vaccination drives and things like that. So, mm. so many of those activities were part of it. So now that uh, we have started meeting physically, it's more vibrant. Mm. And so we're looking forward to a lot more of activities. And I'm, this year I've been a, a secretary like so. Wonderful. <laughs> quite a lot of it. So that itself is, I should say, is a hobby. <laughs> 
in the last couple of years with all the COVID going around, is there some interesting experience you would like to share with us? Uh, okay, yeah, um, non-dance, yes. Um, uh, actually, during the second phase of COVID, there were a lot of death rates in Bangalore. Mm. And uh, so I was part of this Helping Hands group uh, to coordinate, to get beds for the uh, really serious cases and all that. Mm. So uh, I literally, I was kind of a one point contact for all my neighbors and you know friends. So that, that was a very uh, engaging experience, I would say, mm. basically because, uh, you know, um, it's like your time machine runs uh, your your uh, life's you know it's getting like over in a span of a sure. minute or one hour you know that was the kind of you know mm. you don't get a bed uh, then it's it's really a serious issue. Small things uh, yes, make yes. so much of difference. The time time was time. very very essential. You know that was a uh, the thing where uh, you know you had to ensure that person is gets mm -hmm. into a hospital. You know mm. that was a kind of uh, situation. So I experienced it first hand, you know, mm. and losing many of your neighbors, elder people, and even those whom we could accommodate in hospitals passes away. Mm. And there was one instance of our uh, Bangalore uh, renowned uh, Guru Kiran Subramanian's mother, mother. as well, mm. um, who was admitted in Rajiv Gandhi Hospital and she wanted us immediate shift because they had to take her to an ICU. Mm. There was no ICU in Rajiv Gandhi and then I had to, you know, through our helping hands, we got in touch with the commissioner, uh, uh, BBMP uh, commissioner and mm. then we got her a bed. Um, and uh, she was okay for two days, but then due to age related also, mm. unfortunately we lost her. But so, such were the situations in Bangalore, you know. So that was one kind of a thing there where you know you realize actually life is so short. Sure. So you make the best use of it while you are absolutely uh, heart and healthy, you know. So that absolutely. was one of the, uh, the uh, experiences that I had. Mm. Of course, from dance perspective, yes. Um, I would say I, I think I would reached out to a lot more globally. Mm. Um, so our uh, two editions of our Nati Parampara Utsav went virtual. Yes. And I uh, had uh, artists from different other countries. Yes. Imagine Taiwan, yes. Um, US, Moscow, uh, Russia, mm. uh, then uh, Canada, Australia. So many artists from other parts of the Wonderful, world yes. you know, could participate, perform in our festival. Otherwise, it would be used to be uh, physical and in Bangalore and right. the Bangalore audience. So this became very quite uh, mm. a thing. And also we were part of one uh, Janata curfew if you remember. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So we uh, had one association with uh, um, uh, organization in Chennai mm. who brought in a lot of artists across the world and India mm. to participate for the Janta Curfew dance uh, and music related event. Nice. So mm. we had to showcase uh, our students' performances there. Mm. So that was, that was a very wonderful experience, virtual experience. Fantastic. So that way there was a lot of virtually also we were quite... Um, busy I would say mm. putting up new things and all that and then of course we, as you know teaching all or it became online all the students <laughs> came online <laughs> and uh, it had its own challenges and things like that right. but now I think uh, we are again coming back to much safer period and yeah. Things like that. I hope this stays the same. I, I hope so too. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, when you're saying about uh, uh, teaching uh, students, so um, has there been more interest in students after uh, uh, during COVID? Because uh, most students do online uh, classes and their attendance. Uh, apart from Bangalore based or uh, uh, Bangalore based students, mm -hmm. most of my other students are already online. Like I have students in Korea, Russia, mm. uh, UAE, then US, Australia. Mm. So they were already there online. online. There used to be one on one sessions. Mm. But then in the Bangalore, everybody came on. Mm. So that became a little hectic for me to mm. you know, manage as such. But then they, I have uh, ensured right from the beginning that uh, I don't have hundreds of students at factories. Right. So I used to have very limited, qualitative, <laughs> serious, uh, me pursuing uh, students. So that I, whatever time that I give them is productive Quality. from both ends. So True. that way I was able to um, actually spend more time with them Wonderful. online as well. So it, it's like, mm, uh, it was more or less, yeah, you know, the strain of, uh, you could have done three hours 
physically with somebody, I to, I had to cut down to one and a half hours. Two, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. Beyond that, it was too very uh, mm -hmm. difficult. So we have some quick questions uh, for you, Adipa. Uh, which is your favorite place uh, that you would want to travel or you wish to see? Is there any particular? Paris. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> With my husband. <laughs> of course. <laughs> We have a romantic place in Of there. course, yes, yes. And we, uh, we all know that, uh, we all uh, know your husband also very well and he's also a, a good family friend to uh, me and my parents and my brother. So, uh, which is your favorite uh, food? Do you have any particular food in, uh, in mind that you really like? I like this mango pulsheri, you know. They make uh, mango, uh, ripe mango with the huh. uh, curd, uh, the sun, you know, it's a speciality of Kerala. Wow. Uh, and it will be a sour and sweet kind of a thing. So I, I just love that with hot rice. <laughs> wow, wonderful. That would be interesting. Do you cook people? Yes, I, I do cook well. Wow. I enjoy uh, eating, of course. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> we have to look at our, uh, keep up on our weight and things like that. But then, yeah. Actually, uh, this uh, um, COVID time was a very, very good uh, time to, <laughs> to spend test with your family and eating. <laughs> yeah, um, our physical exercise got a little curtailed because mm -hmm. when you are teaching physically, you are also dancing with them. Right. Here, you are you will have to sit and train them. That was a very tedious thing. Mm -hmm. Now we are getting back to that. Right? Wonderful, wonderful. So, um, if you were not a dancer. What would you be? Have you ever thought about uh, uh, an advocate? Advocate. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's nice. Because I've done my five years law, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, um, of course I was in the corporate for almost twenty-five years. Uh -huh. Maybe that would have continued. Probably.